What is up everybody? Welcome back to the show. I want to talk a little bit behind the scenes today on the last video that I did on David Brookover, which is the second in season two of the Artist Series. And if you haven't seen that yet, I will link it up at the end of this video. Highly recommended. David is incredible. He is one of two artists that I've interviewed for the Artist Series that I would actually consider to be a friend, the other being Alexei Titarenko. Uh, for whatever reason, I've just connected with these people and we've stayed in touch. David is excellent. In fact, David and I, it's kind of interesting, we were friends before the Artist Series. And if if you followed the show for the last couple years, you would probably remember David. Um, he sent me one of his books one time called The Road, and The Road is an amazing book that he put together of his work. Uh, it's kind of a monograph retrospective. Um, and. I called him and I said, David, this is amazing. Can I feature this on the show? And he said, I'll do you one better. And he sent me the clamshell red edition with a limited edition print on the inside, which was just amazing. And so we developed a friendship over a couple months before the artist series actually went into crowdfunding. And he was one of the first people I invited to be on. Um, I've always had a, a tremendous amount of respect for David's work and it seemed like an obvious choice to have him in there uh, to represent the landscape side of things. And so once we started the crowdfunding, I, I had asked him, and he agreed that he would do it. And I started to get ideas of what we could do for that. I knew he was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I knew it was just absolutely beautiful up there. And I got this idea, and of course this never actually happened, but I had this idea of doing this drone shot for the intro. And so I was like, I, and I didn't have a drone at that point. And I'm like, I've got to go get a drone. Because I, I envisioned this shot like overhead and you see this grass below and it's blowing in the wind and you have all these textures and I'll slowly descend. And then as the camera pulls up, you see David there and he's loading his eight by 10 up and he's getting ready to take an image. And I was like, man, I've got to get this shot. So I went to Best Buy, bought a drone, came back, started to learn how to use it, and I was doing all this research, and then I found out you can't fly a drone in the national parks. It's like against the law. So that was scrapped, and I didn't actually use the drone for that, although I've used it for other things, but uh, it was kind of the shot that got away on that. But anyway, it was a great video. It was fun to do, and if you've never been to Jackson Hole, um, this is kind of two stories in one here, because this is a place that I've always had kind of this personal connection with, namely through an image that Ansel Adams did years and years ago go of the Snake River. And what you see in this image is the Snake River in the foreground and the Grand Teton mountain range in the back. And I, this is an image that I've always loved. It's always meant a lot to me. And when I used to work at the museum, the hallway my office was in, they had all these big posters that were mounted of uh, former shows that the museum had done. And years before I was ever there, they had done an Ansel Adams show. And that poster for the show with that image on it sat right across from my office. So every day for seven years, I saw that image and it always just blew me away. I mean, I knew the image before then, but I, it, seeing it all the time like that, it, there's, it, it's a great image and it's, it's really interesting. I mean, that light he's shooting in is a little on the strange side, which is really cool. And the way the sun is sort of behind the Tetons and of course, Ansel being the master at dynamic range. Uh, you have just these deep dark shadows and then these bright highlights and, and all these ranges in between and it, it creates such an interesting mood uh, with that weather that's just amazing and, and it's, it's a beautiful place. I had the opportunity to go to Jackson, I guess, uh, a couple of years into the museum, I went out there to talk about a series of films that I had done at this film symposium that they do every year, and I just fell in love with it. And you actually pass that scene. It's just outside of the city of Jackson Hole, and it really is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And so um, David and I started to arrange to do the interview, and he kind of had some additional ideas, and he said, well, you know, I, I have this studio that I work with, Hidden Light, there in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm thinking about bringing a bunch of people out here when you come up. And so we were scheduling our dates, and we moved them around a little bit and so okay we've got this set he said these guys are gonna fly up on their own because one of them is a pilot and I was like wow this is amazing so it was a particularly travel heavy month and I had been gosh to Chicago for a couple days I came back to Dallas and literally the next morning flew to Jackson and I was exhausted I woke up real early in the morning went to the airport it's pouring down rain I get in this plane and, and Jackson's a little difficult to get to depending on where you're coming from and so uh, I had to go through Salt Lake City first but as soon as you take off from Salt Lake City to make the connector flight into Jackson you, you start going through the mountains and it's just every time you look out the window it's just amazing just these mountain ranges below Low, and especially that time of year, early summer, when it's starting to warm up up there. And uh, when you fly into Jackson, if you ever have the privilege of going, um, it is just simply, um, it's gorgeous. Like for a photographer to be able to go to Jackson or any kind of artist, it's so inspiring and reinvigorating and and uh, your soul just comes alive. And and I, I since I'd been there before, I knew the trick. And they do change this so it's not a definite, but you need to sit on the right side of the airplane when you book your flight. And so when it's 
descending down into where the airport is in Jackson, you come through the Tetons and you look out the window and there it is, just like the Ansel picture. Uh, you're a little higher up in your vantage point. You don't see as much of the Snake River, but it is just gorgeous. You fly down these mountains and they drop you into this teeny tiny little airport that just has a handful of gates and there's no, um, you literally just walk off the stairs of the plane onto the tarmac and then into the building and you turn around and they tell you not to take photos, but yeah, whatever. And these are all done on my iPhone, so I'm sorry about the quality. But anyway, you just turn around and this is the view that you see. And it is just epic. And it's just beautiful. And anyways, Jackson's pretty amazing. And so we go into Jackson and David is there at the airport uh, with one of the guys who runs um, Hidden Light and Flagstaff, Stephen Saunders. Stephen is a great guy. And it's kind of funny because I guess David's one of those linchpin friends that when you meet other people he knows, you feel like you know them too. And so everybody's just hanging out and having a good time. We went to lunch went and saw David's gallery, which is amazing. David is right on the town square, and the town square in Jackson's kind of famous uh, for a couple of things, but one, they have these huge arches that are made out of deer antlers that, that hang on the corners there, and his gallery is literally right there, and it's really cool, and so we got to hang out for a little while, went over to uh, David's, actually, we went over to the guy's house we were staying with was another friend of David's, this guy, Joe DeFiglia, and Joe was awesome, and he has this big house, opened it up to all of us, so he allowed allowed five photographers to stay there, which is uh, a bold move. And so thank you to Joe for that. He was super, super cool. And his place is amazing. It has this wonderful view of the mountains. And just the weather when we were there, it was just like it would get dusk and, and you look out the window and you'd kind of see clouds drifting by because you're at really high altitude. It was just gorgeous. And David and his wife, Yuko, had prepared this lovely meal for us. And so we all got to sit down and hang out and eat together. And we spent the next couple days filming in Jackson. We went over to David's gallery and actually that entire interview uh, is filmed in this little basement part. Um, his gallery is two levels, and you go in, and then you go downstairs, and there's a real quiet basement area that's just beautiful with, with all David's work. And as I've said before, the interesting thing about David and his work, um, and why I like him so much, is that this is really what makes him unique, is his complete willingness to be versatile in various mediums that he's printing on. So he will make images, and also in the way he makes images. Sometimes he'll shoot film, 8x10. Sometimes he'll shoot uh, digital. Um, there was a great, uh, we talked about it pretty extensively in that interview, but there's a silver gelatin contact print that was made from a digital negative, and I know that we didn't really s explain everything in detail in that, but it was an image that he shot alongside the road, and it was with his Nikon DSLR, and it was literally like three, I think it was three or four images, and then he stitched them together. And then the way these are done is then you make a contact print that, I believe they do these as inkjets, but somebody from Hidden Light will have to correct me on that if I'm wrong. But anyway, they make a large digital negative out of that, printed from the digital uh, image file. And then that is done as a contact print, so there's no enlarger, it literally just sits on top of the paper, and that's how the print is made. And it was problematic and difficult to do because you can only eke so much out out of the negative and then they had to result to using ruby lift masking and other techniques that are kind of you know fairly conventional for darkroom but it's a really interesting process of that hybrid nature of shooting digital and then going out to silver gelatin and they'd also done the same with doing these really large uh, contact prints for platinum palladium and if you're not clear on what all these processes are these are different ways of creating emulsions on paper now platinum palladium uh, irving penn used extensively and was one of the masters of and it was an older process that that uh, people stopped using around the time, I guess, of World War I, World War II, and nobody was using it, and Penn kind of brought it back into vogue. And it's a really amazing process, and it creates these beautiful prints. Now, the contrast is completely different than silver gelatin prints. And that's why they call it platinum palladium, because it's two separate uh, ingredients that can be mixed, and some of David's prints are pure platinum, so they're very low contrast, and has this very soft, beautiful, lush look to it when you get up close. And it really is looking like it's like looking at nothing else I mean they're really gorgeous and sharp and just the texture of the paper and that was another thing that David mentioned in that interview is, is um, his interest in, in Japanese papers and how that influenced him well if you're making your own emulsion you can put it on whatever you want so it allows you as an artist to go in and hand select specific papers for different textures you might want to use and such David also works in brom oil he's done photogravure and these are all completely different processes with different looks and, you know, David, in some ways, as a photographer, and one of the things I love about him, 
is he's a bit of a kid in the candy store. I mean, he's he's kind of specific in what he shoots, which is nature and landscape images. Um, sometimes that is outdoors, sometimes that is just the small tabletop. But his willingness to pick that medium in terms of the genre, but then change the mediums up on that. So that could be different types of cameras, different types of capture, whether that be digital, whether that be film, and then what he prints out to. And I think that's the importance of why he works with Hidden Light. They're clearly the best at what they do. Matt Beatty is one of the best platforms and palladium printers around. They all have different specialties, all the guys that work there. And it didn't work out this last year. One of the things I really wanted to do is a follow-up and it just got too late and too busy for me, but um, they invited me. But I, I would love to go to Flagstaff, Arizona and just show you their lab and how they work and the kinds of things that they do, because it really is impressive. And I think that's what works. And David, you know, over and over when we were up there, he was stressing how important teamwork was to him. And, you know, I, can, I felt a little bit like I was in involved with that because here I am making this video and that's what I brought to the table, but also what they do. Um, you know, Hidden Light and, and, and the expertise that they bring from a printing aspect. Even Richard Jackson, who was with them, he works as a consultant and he's worked for everybody and all the magazines and all the museums and these guys are just, they're the best of the best. So what it allows David to do is have a direction and a process in mind that he wants to go towards and be able to funnel all that through there and then have people who already are the best at what they do come in and bring that to the table. And so it ends up being a bit of a team effort. And I think it's one of the very unusual things and it's really cool to see a photographer like David who operates like that because like I said, it was amazing. And it was like, everybody was interested in the same stuff. We were just hanging out. A couple of things we did, um, you know, we'd go to lunch together and then we were all staying in this house together. And so, okay, a bunch of photographer nerds, uh, it's gonna be whiskey time and photo nerd movies at night. And so we ended up watching the Bill Cunningham Cunningham movie, which I had seen before. And then another one I hadn't seen, which was the Jimmy Chin documentary. And if you're not familiar with Jimmy Chin, I'll find some ways to link up in the show notes to some stuff he's done. He's an incredible photographer, videographer. Uh, he's an extreme climber. Uh, he's a particularly interesting individual. And coincidentally, he lives in Jackson Hole as well. And so a lot of the stuff in that film was shot there. And so anyway, so it was a great time. We had such fun. Uh, the second day, uh, Joe DeFiglio took me out to get some B-roll. And since I was robbed of my drone idea, um, I had to figure out something to do. So what I ended up doing was just still mount, but we ended up shooting a bunch of landscape stuff and they knew all the cool places to take me and so Joe did that and we got some great time lapses that I could interact with and use as b-roll and then that night um, we took Joe out and David kind of gave him a lesson in how to set up the large format 8x10 get it set up, do an exposure using the zone system. And we thought about using that as a tutorial, but I thought it worked really well just as B-roll, just to kind of bring you into it. So that's kind of when we did that. And then the next morning, unfortunately, I had to get up really early and then uh, get to the airport to, um, to get back to Dallas to get some other work done. But it was such an amazing trip. We had such a good time. And those guys, I can't thank everybody enough. Um, you know, it's funny because I, I'm very, very fortunate in the fact that I get to do this for my job and it's pretty cool sometimes and it can be a lot of work sometimes too but but those moments are the most fun when you get a good group of people together that's just having fun making something awesome. And so David and his wife Yuko were, were amazing. Joe DeFiglio who put us all up. Uh, of course uh, the guys from Hidden Light, uh, Stephen Saunders, Matt Beatty, Richard Jackson were all there and then also David's dog Mocha was a big part of everything that we did. And so it was just an awesome time. So anyway so that is episode two, a little behind the scenes look at the artist series. And uh, if you guys haven't seen that yet, head over and check it out. I will link it up here. And uh, I'm really proud of this next batch of artist series videos. I think that I got onto a groove and took them into some place that I'd really never been before. And I'm really relieved that you guys like that because a lot of times when you're making something, you don't know how people are going to react to it. And it's been very positive so far. And so I'm super excited. So go check that out. And I really appreciate you guys sharing these things. Uh, that is the most important thing of anything that we're doing right now, particularly those videos because I'm not in them and I can't do my little speeches at the end to say, hey, remember to like and share and all that, which probably gets glossed over anyway. But sharing those is really important. Send them to your friends, share them on websites, um, get the word out and get people's eyeballs on these because I think they're, as I said before, they belong to you guys, they're worth it and uh, I'm, I'm just really happy with the way everything's going. And so I thank you guys for that as well. So go check that out. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it. Any questions, leave them in the comments and I can get back with you. And uh, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.